All right, we are live. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Can you guys hear me? If you can, kindly type yes in the comment box so that we know whether you can proceed. There we see. Yeah. Test, test. Can you guys hear me? Let me just do a test. Okay, thank you. Thank you, John. We are live. Oops, sorry. <laughs> okay, let's proceed. And uh, welcome to our Dr. Wealth uh, AMA session with fund managers. And uh, today we have Dr. Tan Chong Kui, who is the founder of Film Asset Management. Right, so I first know about Dr. Tan uh, through this book. Yeah, I can see right. Rising above financial storms. Okay, so that was uh, uh, my first encounter. Wow, this fund manager has a very impressive track record. Okay, and, and there's a lot of wisdom in the book, a lot of uh, really good examples um, and talking about his, his uh, fund management uh, philosophy as well as his uh, performance, right? So he has uh, been managing funds for more than 43 years. Okay, more than 43 years, all right? That's, that's uh, even before I was born, okay? He started managing money. So that's how impressive the track record is. And definitely he has seen many booms and bars and he will be able to give you valuable insights and wisdom in this interview. So I'm really looking forward to it. I hope you guys ask a lot of questions. Uh, feel free to just type in a question, uh, whether it's on Facebook or whether it's on YouTube where you're watching. Right? Just type in the questions, we will find time to address them. Okay, and I uh, just want to talk a little bit about his track record. Uh, so his uh, flagship film ASEAN Emerging Companies Fund uh, uh, has returned more than 10 times the benchmark, right? It beat the benchmark by 10 times over a period of 20 years. So uh, it's, it's uh, uh, one of the rare uh, fund managers that can do so in a very consistent manner, right? He also manages money for Malaysian pension fund and has outperformed the benchmark every calendar year for 23 years all right so he is the legend and i hope you guys don't waste the opportunity to ask as many questions as you can okay so maybe i kick off with the first question dr tan okay so given the accident track records of theme uh what are your secret sauce can you dive dive uh, diverge a little bit of your secret sauce I think our investment philosophy help. You know, we always say this: uh, never fully invest at all time. Why? Why is it important? Okay, you know, when I was in the university, you know, I always had this problem. The problem with equity is the volatility. So how do you handle the volatility? That that's very key. You know, you must find a way to handle that, so that you can make sure that you beat the fixed deposit in a very big way. Unless you can beat the deposit in a big way, you, you have problems because people were just not taking the risk, you know, because of the volatility. Now, this is important. I just did an assumption. If you are aggressive fund manager and you have this idea that you you why put all why not put all your money in the equity? Because equity gives you a better return. But better return, you need to qualify that because it's not better return at all time. So what I did is that when the market is very high, I normally raise cash so that I have some cash. So when the market crash or when the market have a strong correction, you will not hurt at the max. Now, if you are fully invest, you get hurt at the max, but that's not it, the end of the story. The story is that when you are fully invest, you get hurt at the max. And when you get hurt at the max, if you are a fund manager, your, your, your investor will come and redeem. That will make it worse. You sell the share that you have in the portfolio. That will even make your, your, your performance go down. Unlike, let's say, when the market goes up, I think it's so overvalued. I raise, I have cash. When the market comes down, I have the cash to buy the cheap shares. So you notice that I, I occasionally mention that I need a crash to outperform, but that is the main reason. Because when the market crash, the shares are so cheap that you know when you buy them, 
and with, when you have the cash, you buy them, you keep for a while, you make a lot of money, and you can easily outperform the index. Uh, at our best, you know, our ASEAN uh, fund outperformed by a few hundred percent. You know, that was the main reason. Uh, a lot of outperformance come from the year of the crash. In fact, if I look at two zero two zero, we are very lucky. Uh, we comfortably outperform most of the accounts, if not all the accounts. Uh. Okay, so I, but I, I this is I really controversial, right? It is quite controversial because the financial advice is always uh, stay in the market. You know, you can't time the market. Uh, time in the market is is more important than timing the market. That's the usual thing that uh, you know financial advisors or or the experts always say. So what you are coming here with is a very uh, opposite concept, right? And that means that you must be able to tell when it's high, when it's low. Right. Mm. How, how do you make sense that, you know, it's time to raise cash? Okay, I, I think I think that's a good question. I think uh, basically everybody will ask the same questions. Huh? Now, you know, our market is very volatile and it happened. Yeah, 1987, it crashed, you know. October the 19th, the market crashed. And uh, October the 19th, Dow Jones dropped 508 points. That's 22.6%, one day. That's the sharpest one-day drop in history, you know. And if you look at uh, also Asian crisis, although Asian crisis come mainly from Asia, not from USA, uh, that, that is also very interesting. You know, it, it, just, it just came down so sharply, you know. So uh, then you have tax bubble, you know, you know when the tax stock are so high, you know. Uh, then you have September 11, so-so, you know, but it's still a correction. Sound also is still a correction. A global financial crisis is also uh, very hard, you know. They, they started 2007, end of 2007, and then come down for one year plus. Huh? Now, how do you trace them? To me, I think market PE is more important if you're going to track uh, uh, the market, whether the market is so overvalued, you know. Uh, they all come differently. Uh, maybe we should, we should. Uh, I think September, you know, uh, Black Monday, nineteen eighty-seven. I mean, in the local market, you can easily track it because the market go up very sharply, so sharply that you can feel that it's so overvalued, and then you you should reduce your exposure. In fact, nineteen eighty-seven, I was voted top fund manager. I raised so much cash, you know, I raised almost sixty-five percent cash. Because it went up so sharply, you know. And of course, if you are Morgan Stanley, you're a big fund manager, when they come to Asia, they, they, they always want you to fully invest because you are only part of their overall asset allocation. So that, that's a bit different. But when you manage your money, uh, you want to avoid that big crash. So by, by coincidence, the Black Monday come along, Dow Jones drop so sharply, you know. Uh, because they increased the interest rate, so then the market just corrected. You know? So that that was my first success. You know, uh, market PE was so high, and some of the individual stock is so high. You know, so I I was very lucky. That was my first success, and ever since then I have been practicing value investing. Every time the market get too high, and when the economy weaken. And, uh, and you know the earning per share is not sustainable. That is a very key point, you know. So you, you would want to get out. Now, okay. market PE is important. We, what we do is that we, we measure all the high and low each year. Uh, and and we, we know what is the high point, what kind of PE are you looking at, you know. So when they are there very high, and when you think that it, the earning cannot sustain, you really want to reduce exposure. Now, 2007 is very clear cut. You know, US economy is already having a lot of problems. You know, they have this mortgage and they, they cannot pay, they simply sell. You know? So, in 2007, it is so clear that, you know, economy is weakening, earning percent cannot sustain, and uh, your, your market fee is just too high when the in earning drop, when it comes along, you know. So 2007 is very easy to trace that, you know, you should get out, you should get out, you know. Uh, so so uh, long story short is that although they don't come 
the same way, but your market PE is very important. Yeah. Okay. Okay, your sector PE also important. You know, like tax bubble, your sector is so high, you know, and the earnings are not there, you know. Those situations, you should try to reduce, you know, especially the stock that you have, you know, you also need to track very clearly. Okay. So, so, so what, I, what I heard is that you mentioned three things, right? One is the market PE is important. That tells you whether the overall market is high or low. Uh, second is the earnings growth, right? Is it is it uh, slowing down? Is it weakening? And then the, you also mentioned uh, something about the economy, right? Whether is it doing well or not? So uh, it's a combination of all these factors. Am I right to say that? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Those are, you are tracing the level of the high market, you know? So okay. then it's a bit complicated. Uh, the next question you're going to ask is how do you handle the crash? <laughs> yeah. My so next you, question the, one the time, way of, you need to get out. The key is that as a fund manager, you don't want to get caught at the maximum when the price is at the highest price. You really, really get, you get hurt at the max and it's not going to be easy for you to come back. That's why some fund, you know, they say after they get some setback, they close it down because it's very hard to turn around. Yeah. Uh, we are some of those stupid ones. You know, our ASEAN fund is like 26 years old. You know, it's a very long time. You know? yeah. Yeah. So, so, so my, my next question is actually, right, um, how do you see the market right now? Is it time to raise cash or is it time to just stay invested? I think... I think the market in US is not low. La. Everybody, anybody will tell you that. La, you know? So at the most, the new star, emerging star, maybe they're still cheap, maybe very few. Yeah. So you need to be cautious. You don't want to not only fully invest, you do go borrow money and speculate in, in the market. You know? So you need to be careful. We are cautious. Yeah. We think the market is not low. So uh, unless the share has come down, the, the, the funny part is that US, US is interesting. US hit the highest point, uh, I think in February last year, you know, and then it, the crash came on uh, February the 12th, go down sharply, drop something like, Dow Jones dropped something like 38%. Uh, within five and a half we hit the lowest point on March 23rd. Yeah, so, so you know, the, the, the drop is very sharp. So it become actually quite quite attractive at that time. Some share drop more than 38%. 50% is very common, you know. So, uh, okay. So uh, how, how much, if I may ask, right, how much cash or percentage of cash is your fund currently having right now? If you're okay it to share. It ranges like whether your balance funds or your this fund, but I, I would like to tell you this. Uh, <laughs> we are increasing cash. We are not we are not increasing exposure. We're increasing cash. Okay. And uh that that's that's what we, 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 we are doing now, you know. We, okay. we would like to increase cash, you know, because if you if you think the market is not low, you don't want to really have a maximum equity exposure. You know? Okay, okay. Right. Thanks, thanks for the hint. <laughs> okay, we have a related question. Random, Brendan asks, uh, based on your opinion, how do you determine or uh, what is a good asset allocation strategy between cash, equity, bonds, etc. if you are investing for the long term for retirement, 10 to 20 years timeline? If you think the market is near the highest, uh, you 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 really want to have it close to fifty percent cash, you know, you know, and just to be careful. Uh, even at the highest point, I would agree that some share are not at a very high point. So, if you know how to analyze, you you think you want to keep this share for longer term, you you can still have them. But you don't want to have a situation you are fully invested because in our market, when the market comes down, the good and the bad will go down. And I think if you are an experienced fund manager, you will realize that good or bad all go down. So if you don't have cash, you're going to have a lot of problem. Your share will all collapse, you know, and then you underperform. You're going to have more problem because your client is going to come and redeem. 
that's why that's why you see yeah uh, when the market go down and then you think it's so undervalued why is the share continue to go down because if you are a fund and you get caught at the max and you temporarily come down and somebody an investor get panic they come and redeem when they redeem you are forced to sell shares you know and you need to you are forced to sell share in a very short time then the share you sell the share it go down you know so so that's why you know our market is a bit volatile in that sense huh? so you need to be careful then on the other hand if you have cash the good and the bad all go down you know last year in in uh, march april and may actually if you have cash you really want to watch you know anything that go down sharply and go and touch the new low and it meet our investment criteria ah this is very important ha huh? <laughs> meet our investment see our investment criteria we have been practicing it for a long long time we wanted to buy a share that is relatively low gearing why because when you are highly geared when a crisis come the banks or 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 your other investor the first thing they do they sell the share that has a high gearing first because they are threatened to close now so we always without going there we never like to invest in company that is high geared so low gearing potentially the industry or the company they can grow they can grow they can make money for you they can grow they are low gearing and the management must be experienced they have been around for a long time you know they have weathered many crises before and the share was down so under that circumstances you 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 want to buy them because uh, you take a longer term view especially if they you know it, it, let's say if you think the share is undervalued at $2 now certainly it become one isn't it you have a big advantage you know? so we always do that you know Mm. I, I think I think where he's coming from right is that um he's looking for is there a fixed asset allocation percentage between cash equity bonds because you know uh, again financial literature always say that oh uh, maybe you have 50% in stock you didn't invest in bonds and then you just rebalance if let's say the market go down uh, you just sell some bonds and buy some stocks uh that's but my understanding from your explanation is that one has to be a lot more dynamic in the as asset allocation percentage it's not a fixed number right yeah i i you, don't you know, fix it lah i don't fix it because i also have to take a look at my portfolio my, i can only share with you my experience okay there's mm -hmm. so many way of making money there's so many way of strategizing yourself you know yeah okay uh this uh, black monday actually is one of the highest cash i have had i have 65% cash before the market crash and when the market crash i actually i went back and buy actually for the year 1987 our return is between 27 to 35% the top 3 fund are all ours you know now 2007 december i all my asem fund i raised 52% and actually i went back a bit early so uh, asem fund I'll perform the index, but lose quite a bit of money also for the year to O O eight. Even though I had so much cash, because when I come back to buy, I buy a bit too early. But then two O O nine, I did very well. You know, Asian Fund did hundred and six point eight nine percent. That is super high. You know, yeah. So that is the advantage of buying many share at a very low price, and then when it recover, it recover quite sharply. You know? the economy is still continue to grow and then when the people sell their share you think it's undervalued the guy go more undervalued you know just to share with you like i say black monday i raised 65% and uh, and uh, and 2007 i raised 52% that that is all the growth fund huh? uh, so uh, 2002 i basically a lot of them we only raised between 10 to 25% not that high yeah so that means if i raise higher i could have done even much better uh in the year 2020 so uh that that's the ranges now you know? 
So, okay. So, you so, so I guess... To... Yeah, so I guess to answer Brandon's question, it's more like because Dr. Tan knows or has experience to tell when is the market uh, bubblish and then to raise more cash, right? If let's say someone who is uh, really don't have this ability to do so, then maybe going with a fixed asset location may just work, right? Rather than trying to uh, figure out. That's, that's how I read it. Uh. Yeah. So at the moment, you see US is very high. Now, Dow Jones at the moment, the market PE is higher than the highest one in February 2020. Now, your NASDAQ is even much higher than the 2020. So you, you already know it, the market is not low. If you strongly believe that US is going to affect us, then you shouldn't be 100% invested. You jolly well raise some cash because you don't know what will happen. When, when things go against you, you know, the share will just drop. So if you are fully invest, you definitely, I will advise you to raise some cash. No two way about it. In fact, just to share with you, huh, I was given a talk in KL, uh, I think it's January the 12th, on this uh, value investing summit. And they asked me a question, what is your cash position? I told them that uh, I'm raising cash. And I think you should raise cash if you fully invest. And then February the 12th, one month later, the market time, you know. You know, so uh, so of course we we have raised some cash and then we raise some more cash, you know. Then we go down, then we actually buy quite a bit of share in March, April and May, even June, as recently as June. Because sometimes when you go down, they give you some time to collect, you know, because people still continue to sell that share. So what we do is that low gearing, I think the guy management is good and they can grow. And the share has come down a lot. So we buy them. Just to share with you, we bought an Indonesian stock so called MCash. MCash is in the high tech, you know. And uh, we bought uh, Integra, the largest furniture company in Indonesia also, also at a very low price. You know? And we also bought Nickel Asia. Nickel Asia uh, is a nickel company, very low gearing in in uh, Philippines. And we bought around 1.6 only, you know? now it's like 5.5, 5.6. You know? So those are the opportunity. You know? Okay. Sorry, I, I just want to give you some example. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's that's good. Right. So we have a related question when you talk about raising cash, raising cash. So it's about selling, right? Um, so Elmer wants to know what are your exit strategy? Like when do you know when to take profit? Like for example, you mentioned the stock from one dollar to five dollars. Um, should you take it now or should you wait for it longer, right? How how do you tell? Actually, actually very hard to teach you. you know? Sometimes when we sow a share, when we think it's already too high, the guy just keep on going up and going up, you know. So that our strategy is always that, you know, if we are so lucky to have that stock, we will sell sell on the way up. Because there's no way you can sell at the highest point. Let me share you with, with you some of the rubber glove share last year, you know. We we have a staff quite new, you know, and then we took at all the rubber glove shares, you know, and uh, all the top four, you know. So, uh, but the top three is always not so cheap, and then the top four is very cheap. So every now and then, she will come and tell me that, hey, I think this share is very cheap, you know. So I want to institutionalize it. Okay, you think see we buy some, then we buy some. Every time we buy, the guy keep on going down. I think we continue to buy a little bit here and there, and the highest price we bought is around below 180. That's Supermax. You know. Supermax went to $24. You know. But we sold some at 21 plus, but we didn't sell that many at such a high price now because on the way up we sold. You know. But we make a lot of money out of that. You know. So, who is going to teach you where is it going to? So, when we sell 21. 2150 around there. My other staff say it go to $30. It never go there. And in fact, not only never go there, now a day it comes down more than 50% from the peak. It's not easy to teach you how to sell also. Because it depends on how other people are going to do, you know. 
your vaccine come out, how people react to rubber glove. And earlier, everybody want rubber glove. They pay them such a high price. You want to go and buy rubber glove. There's nobody who can supply you. It's totally no nobody who can produce enough to sell you. And the average selling price go up three times, four times, you know. And their profit just shoot up, you know. Yeah. Then, okay. then, then when the profit shoot up, they, they, they pay the price higher and higher. Not only they pay you on your earning growth, they also pay you higher and higher PE. But when the market goes the other way around, the profit goes up, but there will be lower PE. So in other words, your share can go down. And which is what happening now, you know. So it's uh, investment is an art to that extent. You know? So when okay. I see one well, the share go up more than ten times, uh, I'm quite happy already. You know? yeah. So you can say I'm lucky, like, You can say you're lucky. You know? Okay. So so it's not just um um the financial numbers, right? Not just the P alone. It's the overall sensing of how the market is reacting to the stock. And that's that's a good one. That's correct. That's correct. You you need to know. So that's why you know I I write this so called word of wisdom every year. I, this uh, this the twelve twelve year I written. You know, so was this is one time that you know I said you know, you, a good, uh, investor must actually know, what other investor is gonna do. You know? That's very important, but it's difficult now. But you have to try now. You have to try. You know. So, so some people have up. zero rubber glove now, you know. <laughs> some people still have a lot. <laughs> okay. Uh, bringing the attention to US, uh, Gopi is asking, are the FANG stocks, you know, the Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, are they still attractive long-term investment in this period? Okay, I, I, we, we, we specialize in ASEAN. We also go into Asia, like Japan, you know. Uh, last year, uh, one of our Asia and Japan did 31% US dollars, you know, but last year, I must say, China, Taiwan, Korea have uh, done very well, you know, so uh, we also benefited. Yeah, but US, uh, we we follow, but we are not a specialist. Uh, we monitor them in terms of uh, financial data instead of uh, their PE and all these things. Uh, but my, I, I must say that uh, all this star, all this star is very good for us. They perform well, they go up, they also influence our tech stock here. So our tech stock here also goes up. But if you ask me, they are excellent company, they can continue to grow. The key is that, is that the kind of PE that you're going to pay? Yeah, you took a Tesla, no Tesla. That's why at one time was growing, but they were behind the rubber glove, you know. So now the rubber glove go down. Tesla, uh, Tesla still continue to go up, but it's very hard to say one, you know. It can go the other way around also. So, so when they are too high, is whether you want to keep them, you know? but it's hard to say because, let's say if you buy Microsoft, twenty thirty years ago, today you are still very well off. Let's say you buy Apple ten years ago. Now you are still doing very well, you know. But but you can correct now. But if you study carefully, and eh, if you don't sell any of this stock, and you take a look at the price from February the twelfth when Dow Jones crash, and then uh, on 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 March the twenty third at the lowest point, wow, all this share also tank, you know. <laughs> now we recover again, you know. So you, 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 you may want to consider you know, what you want to do with them. You make a lot of money. You, know? yeah. you are taking higher risk. And no one can tell you when is the highest point. You know? yeah. but one thing I would advise you, you, know, you can never sell at the highest point because highest point is only 1% or 2%. You know? yeah. But when you sell high enough, that's good enough. That's my advice to you. Hmm. Okay. So another question, I guess, is more related to US again. Uh, from Tommy, he's asking, how do we select good fundamental companies still making losses? So because I, I, I think the context of it is that there are a lot of new young tech companies in US, they are listing, 
uh, they have losses, which, you know, in the past, maybe we don't see that that often, right? Companies usually make money, then they go this thing. But now, um, you know, with the technological revolution, a lot of the younger companies are, are hitting the capital markets a lot uh, earlier than the predecessors. So if, let's say, somebody is really looking at this kind of companies, right? Um, you know, what, what kind of fundamentals are we talking about? What can we look at to determine who are the good ones and the bad ones? <laughs> okay, okay. I think it depends on the risk you want to take. Like just like Bitcoin now, you know, Bitcoins, a lot of people, some people came and say, you must have Bitcoin. You know? But sometimes you were wondering, you know, when I put in my money, my most important question is that, how do I get out? So I, I need to get out. And when I get out, can I use my cash, you know? So, but some people who bought it so cheap that they don't care, they just hold on and on and on and on there. And if, if valuation satisfy you, well, you're a rich man, you know. But some people, they are not willing to take that kind of risk because they don't know how to exit, you know. So, it's the level of risk you want to take. Now. There are so many ways of making money, you know, so it depends on what kind of risk you want to take. Now, a lot of these shares, I must say, you know, a lot of these shares, they don't have profit yet and they pay a very high price and you you would also understand you know some of them uh, they hold on and then they continue to go up and then when the market crash they also come down you know? so so you need to also as an investor if you want to play safe you want to take acceptable risk use the word take acceptable risk above average return you want to take acceptable risk you have to you have to make up your mind, you have to disqualify. And then you, you, you still have to make money. But the, the saddest part is that you, you only make the return of a fixed deposit. And uh, you, 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 you don't know how to invest, you even make lower than the fixed deposit. You know how sad it is then. Yeah. So, uh, and the worst thing is that at the highest point, you get in because people tell you that, oh, you know, I make so much, you know. No, you, what makes you think it cannot continue? Uh, that's where you know. You need to you need to know. Um, talk to people uh, Talk to people who know better than you. Uh, you know, try to also see from the conservative side. Uh. Very easy to say you make here, make there, but that's at the highest point. That's also a problem. Okay, yes. I I hope I, 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 I very yeah, hard to answer. I, I, I assume one I, of the harder question. <laughs> I assume you don't invest in companies that are still making losses. Yeah, you see, when they are still making losses, but they are projecting that this company now making losses, but in future, it will make profit. And the outlook for the industry is so good that you are only temporarily not making money, but later on, they will make money and the PE ratio will be very low. I think Tesla is one of them very clear they are not making money they just like grabs you know sometimes they say you know but the longer term these are very revolutionary and whether they can make it or not it depends obviously they couldn't make it then uber and grab merch then hopefully they can do better you know? but those are they don't make money yet but in future they think they can and then they are willing to pay a price even though they don't make money that's why I, I we, earlier we, we were talking about that. You also need to study how other investors are reacting, you know. That that's exactly like what happened. You know, you buy a share that had no profit yet, but the investor believe that in future they will make profit and they buy. If they buy the, the share goes up. That that's that's the key, you know, that's the key. But if you don't believe in that, uh, you prefer to invest in company that make money and still very cheap and you feel a lot of comfort then go for it now you you are someone that who doesn't want to take the other risk you are not totally wrong by the time you found out you're wrong it's all over already the guy crashed already so investing is on your own uh, criteria you know what kind of level of risk you want to take, you know? Okay. But always so, good to be conservative, you know? Okay, so related question. Um, uh, still on US stocks, right? Uh, so John uh, said that he invests in US stocks and gone up so quickly, right? That he has this strategy, if 
it goes up three times, they sell one third. It goes up four times, they sell one quarter, for example. Uh, then uh, in this way, he recovers his initial investment. Uh. So he'll ask, he likes to ask, what do you think of this kind of uh, uh, strategy? Not, not, not a bad strategy, la, but the whole idea is a difficult one. A difficult one is that uh, your whole idea is you must analyze it. La. You analyze it. But analyze, analysis is also quite tricky. Now, what we did actually also a bit similar. You know, I buy a share, you know, sometimes when they double, you know, and I, I'm not so sure whether I can trust them. You know, sometimes I, I sell half of it. Whatever I have is a free share, you know. Then we fight with them. And then sometimes some of this share, you know, in my lifetime, I bought share that go up seven and a half times, 10 times, 15 times. And one of the warren is like 50 times, you know. I mean, this is uh, very interesting, you know. Yeah, but that was because I I ride with them. When the guy keep on running, I just keep for a while. And then if they, until I cannot breathe already, you know, so I, I give them all of them, you know. Yeah. And, and in fact, uh, this round rubber gloves are like that. You know, but they will just keep on telling you that how great it is, you know. Yeah. So you, you make up your mind, you know. So your strategy is not totally wrong, you know. You you take out all and then it's all free share, you fight with them. Then when they tank, 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 then you must decide, you know, up to a certain level. Well, um, you call it a day, you already make so much money. There's no way you're going to make the best money at all times, you know. Uh, okay. Investment is a lesson until you 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 hit it right or wrong, you know. <laughs> okay. Uh, There's Jones. no perfect formula, you know, because the nobody's. Uh, you, I mean, I don't know how to answer your question. You know, you can say a share has a value, uh, but you can also say in another way, you know, value is in your eyes. You buy the share, it goes up. You sell the share, it goes down. And where is the value? You cannot say it has no value. But you can say it's difficult hmm. to access the value. <laughs> okay, so so now there's an opposite uh, view of this, right? So uh, Chin Chung is saying that he has a stock that went hundred percent in one year, uh, and still profitable, right? And he's thinking of entering more instead of selling, right? So okay, what you, you, you analyze the stock. You analyze the stock, and then you you try to figure it out now whether they're gonna make more money for you. you know? But if you you have not enough information, you don't know what to do, and that's where the problem comes. Huh? You don't know what to do, you know. Yeah, then it's hard to hard to also accept. Then it's also depend on the level of market. If the market is very high, and the market is gonna come down, uh, I mean you you use on the very pessimistic side, now, you know. U.S. market is so high, and U.S. market can only come down. And then when you ask that question, that the market is very high, then then you know what to do. You know, you you may want to get out. Okay. So there so are what, yeah, what, many yeah. other consideration. The key yeah. is so, to analyze so, the stock. Okay, so it drills down to how confident and how much conviction you have about that stock, right? If you're yes. confident, yeah. then you hold or even add. If you're not, then maybe you trim. And if the overall sentiment yeah. is, is bu too bullish already, you better trim, right? So it's a it's a mm. um not a not a you know a, a very rule-based kind of approach, but it's more case by case basis. Mm. Mm. I, I give you one example. Uh. <laughs> it's just as near as in, in Malaysia only, uh. <laughs> you know. Uh you know there's a stock called Great Tax in Penang. Yeah, they they listed at sixty one cents. I think they give one for one bonus. So the the the, the IPO price is almost like the IPO price is almost like uh, 30, 30 cent and a half. You know, I think last week was five something. You know, you just imagine the share must have gone up eighteen times within two years. Now you decide what you want to do. Quite tricky. Eh? Every time you think it's going to go down, the guy just keep on going up. You know? so, so what do you do? They are in the growth sector. They are in the growth sector. They supply. This small company can supply a solar plate to, to, to First Solar, the largest solar company in USA. 
and they also recently get a hundred million contract to supply battery to a truck company in USA. That's also very high end, you know. So they also have some other automation and 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 involved in other sector which will make them grow. But then you know the guys already sell at a very high PE. But every time you think it's high, the guy just keep on going up, you know. Then recently the Forbes say he's a billionaire, come from nowhere, billionaire US dollars, huh? <laughs> Okay, so uh, you, you, uh, this thing, you, you think you're making them, you go out. You know? So every time you go out, the guy go up higher and higher. You know? So, but it's, it's, uh, it's interesting, la, you know, it's interesting. You, you, you feel you're making them, you, you can get out and, and maybe you are already you know, at a very good price. But, but you can also say that in three, five years time, they may, be, they may be much bigger. Also, you won't know. You know. Okay. But you are in an advantage position. Huh? You you have already have a lot of money. At the most, you make a bit lesser. You know. Some people they like to do that. You know, those are super long term investment. You know, yeah. Like for example, you buy Microsoft twenty years ago. You know, you keep up to now. You are rich. You are very very rich. You know? okay. So they are different. You know, they are different different. Uh, but my, 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 my recommendation is to analyze that. Because yeah. at any one time, you know, you know, there will be a new star. You know? Wait, how, okay, how, sorry, would you, uh, how would you say your investing style is like? Is it more top-down, bottom-up approach? How do you find uh, investment ideas typically? Do you stop okay. screen? Do you look at research, sell-side research? It's a good question. It's okay. I think, you know, when someone asks you we're top down or, or bottom up, you know, actually, to be honest, uh, that question shouldn't be asked. You know? <laughs> Everybody, when you invest, you already study the top down. You already also wanted to see, study the bottom up. You, 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 you do the research on both at all time. Everybody do that. You can't be saying that you do bottom up and you never look at the economy. You know, you don't you don't you don't do that. You do all of them, you know. Yeah. So uh, that that's the way I, I, I think I would like to answer now. Okay. So at Bob. the end of the day, which one you overweight the factor? At any one time there's only a few significant factors. So you are you must be able to narrow down the significant factor. At any one time, you know. Okay. Okay. So, sorry, uh, did I answer do, your question? Uh, if they, if you, if Doctor Dan did answer your question, please ask again, okay, and be more specific, <laughs> All right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, do you look at certain sectors like this is a growth sector? Like the next question, uh, is re uh, Shifeng was asking about renewable energy. You know, do you do you look at? Oh, I think this sector is going to be the important sector in the future. Let's look at some stocks, whether we can invest in some of this. Is is this even a typical process? Yes, yes. I think this are uh, our typical process. We actually will identify what are the sector that can grow. You know, and then within that sector, which are the share that has not gone up, or which are the new star that's going to make the company grow? Very important. Like for example, I mean, I try to remember lah. Uh, we are, we think five G will grow. In fact, one year ago, a lot of people think five G is not going to be there. It's going to be there very far away. It's not true. Five G come very fast. You know, now people will really work on six G. You know, so. So we were very pro on 5G. You know? We are very pro on electric car. We are very pro on solar. Solar means renewable energy. You know, uh, you know, renewable energy is important. You know, uh, your battery, your solar, and your hydroelectric power, and so forth. You know? uh, we do, we do, we do try to identify. You know, yeah. People also say cannabis is good. You know, and all this, we will. We will list down all the growth sector, and then we try to get our people to go in and look at them. It's important, you know. Like, uh, okay, okay. Yeah, that's one way to analyze. Uh, you, you're almost like top down. Mm. Then, okay. then after you know this uh, high growth, then you go in and take a look at them, one mm. by one, you know. And uh, mm. you pick the one. It's just like rubber gloves, uh, you know. At one time, you know, 
you go and take a look at all of them, and then you pick the one you like best. Huh? Then you are so lucky you get one, you know, a killer. You know? Okay. How how about uh countries, right? Do you all look at do do you look at countries like um. The related question is from John. Uh, he's asking about in APEC, right? Where do you see the key growth between 22 and 22 five, the next five years now, right? Whether is it China, um, Korea, Japan, Taiwan, you know? Uh, do you even look at country and then try to wait more into a, a stocks in that country if you think that they are going to do well in the next five years? Okay, I, I think we, we, we specialize in ASEAN long, long time since I cannot remember from from very young, you know. Before I was born. Uh, then, then, <laughs> then we go into, then our client was very kind, you know, say, hey, hello, you better go into another country. So we start going into Hong Kong, China, the first shot. Then we go to Taiwan, then we go to Korea. Then we went to India. The first time we invest in India was 2001, after the tax bubble. At that time, everything is so cheap, you know. Even though I remember 2001, the first time we invest in India, wow, we make a lot of money. That is the key again, the crisis is an opportunity. The share are so cheap, you know. So within one year, you know, we make a very good money. You know? If you read the book, you realize that, you know, the first year we went to India, we make a lot of money. Now, uh, okay, uh, if you are a hedge or you, you don't care much about index. You, you just go and find company that you think are good and can perform. Uh, actually, you know, sometimes in almost every country, you know, you need, you, you, you know how to pick stock, you know. You don't have to go too far, you know. You can make a lot of money. Uh, yeah, you know, so, uh, but of course, those country that has high growth uh, will have a better chance. But if you pick the wrong stock, you also can run into problem. So uh, what we do is that we try to assess them. Yeah, like for example, this time around, we find that when the market come down, you know, when Dow Jones come down in February and March, you know, I find that uh, Indonesia, Philippines, you know, they come down more, you know, and uh, there are more share they come down more. So we go and investigate. So in uh, for example, we, we certainly find the largest furniture company in Indonesia called Integra. We invested in them when they first listed at, I think, 260 rupiah. Then they went up to, I think, almost a thousand around. It's quite high. Uh, so we sold all of them. Then uh, we sold all of them not at such a high price, you know. We sold some at 700, 800, you know. And certainly I noticed that the crisis came and they sell below IPO price again, below 260. Then we found out and then they said they actually have very good business. They get good business from US because pandemic come. Many companies give their staff certain budget to buy furniture and work at home. So they actually have a lot of order. So their, their numbers look good and they are lowly gift company. When the IPO came, they came to our office uh, we are very impressed that their two brothers work together very well. So we bought again, you know, below IPO price. You know. Now it's five, six hundred, you know. So it's a low gearing, very experienced fund manager, the share tank, you know. So okay, just to go back to what you asked the country, we 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 have all the manager, we, we allocate the 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 the, the job mark, the their their destination, their their, their work according to to the sector we assign to them also the country you know yeah. so we look at them and then we look at their numbers you know we look at their index we look at their their shares you know so uh, of course we are value investor uh, so the one that go down a lot and the one that meet our investment criteria we go in so this time around you know we, we went into a few stock that go below IPO again after rising to a very good price, you know. and we we do this low gearing, good management, the share tank, and I think they can go back again, and we, which come true, you know, which come true, yeah. So to answer your question, we we look at each country, we monitor them, we look, we we see them, we call them, brokers help us, you know, brokers can bring us up, you know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, I hope I answer your question. Yeah. 
yeah is there is there a country in asia which you feel has the highest growth potential in the next five years honestly uh, the the management the sector you are, you you monitor you you should be able to try to trace uh, but i think you know, last year and year to date, I think Taiwan, Korea, they have done very well. People think Hong Kong, China also will do well. People think ASEAN will do well because US and China trade war uh, have made many companies in either China or US to diversify. So hopefully that actually ASEAN will benefit. But the problem with ASEAN is that ASEAN has very high growth, but sometimes high growth is not equal to the market performance. You must understand that. Uh, 2020 is a clear cut example. Your economy go down, pandemic come in, your market goes up. But of course it come down first. Uh. So the crisis is an opportunity also take some of the, the reason why the market goes up. You know? yeah. But they break the last heart, you know, so Mm, okay so I, I like that phrase is that the highest growth doesn't mean the market performance is the best right it's somehow it's delinked yeah that's why that's why sometimes uh, fund manager and don't know how to give you an answer they will always tell you this uh, you know uh, investment is an art you know <laughs> it's true you know the, the the market has no logic that's where you get frustrated i remember in my earlier years, I had one of the staff based in Singapore. You know, she, after three years, you know, we, every one of them signed three-year contract with us. And she said, oh, she decided to quit the job because she think market got no logic, you know, which is true. But, uh, but you have to deal with that you now mm. if you are in the job. You know. okay. Now, economic growth rate definitely not equal to market performance. It's not like that. They are more okay. complicated than that. You have so many other factors. You know, you got interest rate, you got forex. You know, you got pandemic. You know, you got so many things. Even that, you need to read. You know, and the stimulations. You know, how people react, how the government. Do. Okay, sorry, not to go around. You know, you know we. Yeah. Okay. Come. Um, next question. Uh, how many stocks are ideal in a portfolio? Okay, I think we, we we do small, mid and large cap, you know. Uh, as you can see, Warren Buffett do concentration. Uh, there are also many fund managers in Singapore, also done with some of them, they, they do concentrations, you know. Uh, now, there are also other fund managers, they, they just have 800 stock, you know. They, they, as long as they, they meet their number, they will just buy. Uh, for us, we are we are very interesting. You know, we do a lot of research. You know, and uh, I go for across the board. I go meet small, mid, and big cap as long as they meet my criteria. They are growing, low gearing, management is good, growing, growing, and the price is 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 is, is uh, at a discount. That's very important. So in the long run, and then plus when the market goes up, I get out. I go and find another undervalued stock again. Then I keep on rolling, you know. So you take a look at our long-term funds. Uh, we outperform by a few hundred percent. One. All the major ones, our ASEAN fund outperform more than 300 percent, you know. I manage EPF money also a few hundred percent, you know. Uh, Dana Mark more, more than 300 percent, you know. All our major funds actually uh, are quite, we outperform by a good margin. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, is, is there? Did, a I, did I miss your question? Uh, sometimes I talk, you know, I. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, how, many are, how many stocks are ideal, right? Oh, so why? Okay. Okay. Yes. So okay. Uh, sorry. Sorry. I I need to answer your question. <laughs> we we tend to range from about fifty to eighty, you know. Yeah, because we have small and mid and big cap, you know, and uh, actually quite be quite skilled towards small to mid cap, you know. So we need. The more we have in our payment is lower risk we have because they are tightly held, sometimes they are illiquid. The more you have, the easier for you to get out, just in case you have redemption, you know. Okay. You, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Big cap is easier to get out, which is true. And they, they claim that big cap 
it's lower risk. But sometimes it's not true. You know, sometimes at times, you know, especially in ASEAN country, uh, last year you can see that the big cap has grown so much that many of the big cap cannot grow anymore. So as a result, the index comes down, and uh, the share that perform very well, uh, quite a number of them are small mid cap. You know, so okay. it, it depends on the cycle. You know? We okay. tend to do all, you know, yeah. We, we but, try but, not to concentrate, you know. Okay, but because you are managing millions of dollars, right? But what if uh, is the person investing his own funds? Do you do you think there is a ideal number of stocks in a portfolio? Oh, it, it depends on your size, uh, If you are small, you, you won't be able to go so so many stocks. You know, uh, you you need to be very accurate. You know, but uh, we are talking about like us. You know, we are talking about if you have a fund. Uh, let's say you have a fund around 20, 30 million US, around that size, you know, you, you want to diversify, you want to take acceptable risk, above average return, maybe, I mean, we are a good, good, good model to follow. You know? If you are, if you are in small, mid and big cap, you know? if you are in the big cap only, uh, some of our friends, uh, they, they don't want to have more than 20 counter. You know? But there's also risk, you know, you know, in the at times when the big caps are not performing well, you know, your your twenty stock doesn't mean you're lower risk. Yep, agree. So each has, um, what I hear is that uh, it really depends on your preference. Uh, there's no right or wrong when it comes to uh, uh having how many stocks in your portfolio. Right? Your analysis is important. Now. Let me put it this way. Okay. Okay, another question from Kun Zheng. Given current COVID-19 situation, what do you feel is more of an immediate problem for the countries to solve? Okay, sounds, sounds more like you're asking a politician than a fund manager. <laughs> but maybe can, you, can, you, can, can, can you do me a favor? Can you repeat one more time? I want to okay. be very, very accurate. Yeah. He's saying that given the current COVID-19 situation, what do you feel is more of an immediate problem for the countries to solve? I think the immediate is still the, the COVID, no? it's still the pandemic. You know? So until uh, you, you, you convincingly tell people that this vaccine works, you know, and then you can spread to all over, and then un until also the spread slow down. You know? Unfortunately, uh, many countries seems to control that quite well, and then other countries seems to have the number continue to increase, that's where people get a bit frightened. You know? mm -hmm. Singapore is lucky. Uh, Singapore has uh, much, very much control, but they are also concerned that the foreigner can spread, you know, so, 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 so they are also careful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think number one concern is that, uh, but you are also very concerned if this prolong, uh, you know, your productivity may come down. So when your productivity come down for too long, you know, uh, it's a problem, you know. Then they also have to clear another problem when the pandemic go away, when the economy recover, you know. So uh, the certain surge in demand may also create some inflation problem. So at the moment we also faced with this problem. Interest rate is so low, so people feel that you know maybe the better way is go into equity. Going mm -hmm. to property is very long term, you know, going to equity is more flexible. Uh, so, and then at the same time, you also have one more worry that when the economy recovers, the inflation may come in. So you are pressurized, you know, low interest rate, low return, and then plus the inflation is going to erode your, 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 your value. You know, so 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 that's why sometimes the market continue to stay put. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, but my my answer to you is that you know, uh, when the crisis come, you know, that was a very good opportunity. But although you cannot see it, but you look at all the crises in the past, when they go to the lowest, 
it's the price that you want to concentrate. The price goes so way below your intrinsic value, you know. Uh, that that's the kind of stock you want to choose, you know. Yeah. So it, it's even better, isn't it? That when the crisis comes, you know. Mm. Okay. Uh, did I answer your question, or I I only answered certain percentage? I I, I think it's okay because it's also quite big. <laughs> so, uh, I I have a question, right? Um, uh, what's your advice to someone who wants to learn how to pick stocks? How to? What's your advice to someone who wants to learn how to pick stocks? First lesson, follow our criteria. But what, if they have no, but what if they have no criteria? How, how are they going to start? No, I think that's the starting point. Our, we, we have simplified our investment criteria. You know, take a look at the share that has low gearing and they can grow. The management is good. You take a look at the chart, you know, the share is in very depressed. You also don't buy a share just because the share is depressed, but you must analyze that the company can grow. The management, the CEO can grow for you. You know, that's a little bit of knowledge, but you, you can start, you know, you can start. This is already as simplified as you can. Now, let me put it this way also. Even they meet all your criteria, they can still fail because sometimes they make a mistake. You know, they, they can still fail. You know. So, but it's a good starting point. Uh. Many of the stock we pick meet that criteria and we, we make money. So do you want to use that as a model? It's up to you. But there's no perfect formula. Okay. Going back again, you know, investment, you know, you, 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 need, you need analysis, you need some experience, you need a, some hard work. Now, you don't want to put in the hard work, you know, and you don't have the experience, you know, you know, you have no clue. So then your your, your choice is you pick a fund manager that has a long-term track record, you know, and then plus put in your money when the market is very low. Yeah. Or if you market is not low, you better go for the balance fund, maybe. Okay. Okay, I, I don't know whether I, I, you know, I, I mean, it's as good advice, you know. Okay, start with your criteria, all right? If you don't yes. criteria, still start with your criteria. <laughs> okay. no, criteria it's not a bad start, you know. It's not a bad start. Okay, I'll go and buy my book now. Or I'll go and buy some books now. Right. Any, anyway, anyway, Dr. Tan already gives some tips already, right? Growth. Yeah, some growth management is good. No, the share yeah. price is depressed, right? So yeah, just go and do some work, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, if let's say someone want to join your fund as an analyst, right? Uh, what do you look out for? You mean some, 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 you know, the peop, you know, you're talking about people looking for a job, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who wants to join your fund? You, you, you look at us, huh? we, we have been, we are profitable in Malaysia every year for 27 years, you know. Uh, you notice that we never have any high power people. Uh, we believe in choosing someone that has a good character, someone that really want to learn, someone really not so difficult and someone will be willing to, to, to be part of the team, you know. It's a team player. So basically, very importantly, I look for the character. I look for him as a team player. Because mm -hmm. uh, you, you cannot say, I want to do everything so that I can pick up all the experience and go away, you know. The key is that if you look at last year, our performance, huh? Uh, there are five, six of us. Almost every one of them has one killer. You know? Wow, this is amazing. Even people who are less experienced. So what do they do? We divide their work and they work as a team. Every Saturday we meet. We brief each other what they do. And uh, we have been working every Saturday for 27 years. I work for other people to build their business for 18 years before I start. Now, when during that 18 years, huh, even though Saturday is not a working day, I go to the office and then my boss, and all my bosses like me a lot. Because I, I sort it out every Saturday, Monday only we start running already. So I, 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 I build their business, I, I make money for them. You know? So uh, maybe you can say we are not so efficient, we are not so smart, but, but it works, you know. You look at the record we built, you know. Yeah, very, very... Uh, 
sorry, uh, my, my kids always tell me, don't blow your trumpet, so I better stop here. But you take a look at our record. You know, we win so many awards. You know, and today, we still have very good, outstanding long-term track record. That's I the test. So when you want to look for a job, when, when people come to see us, we are the only few you know, who give someone who has no experience a chance. And all of them, you know, after five, six years, you know, they, you know, Although we, we, we have someone who joined us for more than 19 years, we have someone who joined us for 10, 15 years, you know, but there are also people who come five, six years and go away, but it becomes like a process. You know. We sign three-year contract, nobody will walk off at the same time, you know, so we will always survive, you know. But they have the same CIO for the last same inception, you know. In that sense, we are more steady than many other people. I'm around for the whole time, you know. Although I'm a bit older now, but I institutionalize it. Everybody play their part. They must be a team player, not so calculated. Right now. Yeah. So we are lucky. We have some good people. There are some good people. Uh, they help out, you know. Yeah. I don't trade at all now, you know. I don't. My, my staff will trade, we decide, and then they execute, you know. And it become a process that has been working very well. Looking mm -hmm. for a team that can work together well. You can put five people highly qualified, but we don't have to do that, you know. We have five people who work together very well. That's the key. Character, not willing to be a team player. That's the key. We can train almost anybody, you know. Unfortunately, okay. let me put it this way. In this field, you only need a few very good people, you know. It's not such a huge... Uh, it's very scalable. Uh, employers, you know, very scalable. And uh, and uh, the key is to have few very good people, you know, who are good team players, who's got good character, so that people can trust us, you know. Mm, agree. I'm still working on Sunday, huh? <laughs> I'm also working on Sunday. <laughs> no, I enjoy it. Like that, like boutique, uh. But anyway, you know, if you enjoy it, like, you know, no need to be too this thing. Yeah. Okay, the next question is go back to the the economy. Um so Elma is saying that too much liquidity in the money supply may lead to hyperinflation and cause economic issues. Um do you think this would eventually lead to a big crisis? No, it can it can come. It can come as a crisis, you know, because I think now your low interest rate and then you get so frustrated, so you you go into and you know, uh, of course the 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 government must continue to grow the economy. So pandemic has a bit of slow down. You know, uh, hopefully that it will go away. Then it will grow again. You know? But there are certain sectors that people still think will grow. So you go after those sectors. But if there's just too much money chasing the this thing, then the PE ratio will go up. Then if they go up too sharply, that's a, that's a sign. You know? When they go up too sharply, they will correct. And then maybe they will go back up again. But this correction, you want to miss it. If you don't miss this correction, it's a problem. It takes some time, two, three years to go back again. Or shorter than that, you know. Uh, last year, correction is very short. Came down very sharply. Five and a half week for Dow Jones to drop 38% is one of the sharpest for, for five and a half week. And recover totally, you know, Dow Jones. Also one of the shortest recovery. But although you say that, actually, 87 also recover quite, quite fast, you know. Although okay. global financial crisis take a bit longer time to recover, you know, but mm -hmm. still, still go up. You know. The key is that you go into share that drop very sharply. You know, they those share that drop very sharply recover very fast. You know, that's how you outperform by a big margin. You know, mm -hmm. our ASEAN fund, ASEAN All Cap, uh, which is uh, Cayman Island fund, last year we did. 
21% US dollars and the uh, index is minus 7, you know. So, so you know, we, you know, we, 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 we accumulate some of the share that is at a very low price. We are very happy because last year, I think, we were so worried that last year may be the first time when the crisis come, we don't perform, you know. Uh, last year we performed, you know. We did also very well for our pension fund in Malaysia, you know. Yeah, we rank number one many times. You know. Anyway, okay, sorry, let's talk about other things. Okay, next one. Um, you mentioned about good management. So Jun Xiong wants to ask, how do you tell whether the management is good or not? Not easy, lah, no. You want to you, you need to buy a textbook, you know, to evaluate how good is the managers, how good is the fund management. But fund management is more more difficult than it appears, you know. Uh, the CEO not only really know the economy well, he know the industry well, he know how to react when the crisis comes, he need to preempt them and all these things. But the key also the same, like just what you in value a fund manager. The people, you know, we, as far as you're concerned, you must be in the industry more than 10 to 15 years, otherwise you, you, are, you are not considered as experienced because you have not gone through crisis before. So a lot of staff who join us also I told them the same before you leave huh, you must go through one round of crash first you know otherwise you won't learn you won't be able to learn when you join us you saw us going through the crisis then that's how you learn uh, otherwise uh, it's not a good real experience uh. is it because so, it management a good management not easy to this thing but but you can you can analyze you know Sometimes this guy, CEO, he come from a very established company and then he switched job and he has good reputation and, uh, and he has new client, he has new link, you know. Yeah. So, so, you know, uh, also very subjective. Uh, so your ability to analyze become also very important. Yeah. To read people, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you know, you, you want to see that, hello, this new CEO, is he going to make money for me? Or is he monkey around, you know? Yeah. Okay, but you have the like foresight, you know, is he has the knowledge, is he uh, is a good leader? Not easy, not easy, but, you know, yeah, they, no one is perfect, no one is perfect. You have an advantage because you get to meet them, right? As a fund yes, manager. Yes, of course, of course, I meet them. We, uh, people like to meet us, you know, we are, we are reasonable people. Uh, we have good track record. People like us, you know. Sorry, I mean I shouldn't blow so hard, no? but uh, but if if let's say it's a it's an individual investor that doesn't have this access, right? Then how are they gonna tell whether the management is good or not? You 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 have your own weakness, now, But to be fair, if you work very hard now because of social media, you 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 can access to some of the very good people quite easily now, yeah. So you may not be able to grab as many chances as you can compare with maybe more established fund manager. But don't forget, you know, it's the quality shot. If you somehow, you know, like follow, you know, when the crisis can't pay a little bit of attention, the share tank, and then very good company also tank one, you know. You know, like first class company, the TSMC in Thai, Taiwan, you know, when the crisis comes, they tank, you know, you can buy them. Samsung also same thing. When they tank, you go and buy them. I mean, at the lowest point until now, I'm not surprised, you know, Samsung have gone more than 50% up. You know? The good, that's why I say, why is crisis? It's an opportunity because the good and the bad all drop. I'm only interested on the good company, you know. Many of the good company also tank, you know. Yeah. So you, 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 you need to stick into your head, you know. Crisis is an opportunity. And when the good company also tank, they give you all kinds of reasons, but you feel, you know, this is a very good company. They can turn around. The management has been good. After the crisis, they can always come back. You know? okay. It's true. Uh, you take a look at many of the companies. You look at Geely, you know, you look at the SMC, you look at Samsung, all went up. Hynix all went up, you know. Compared with just few months ago, you know. Yeah, we, we know your you you and your team work very hard, right? So do do you ever count how many stocks do you analyze a year? 
Oh, okay. Uh, let me let me put it this way. You know, if you including the briefing, you know, if every officer met the management nowadays, you know, it's very I you know all the con con. You know, every of my officer meet three or three and a half company a week. We would have met at least more than a thousand company a year. But doesn't mean anything, you know. You you also need to analyze it correctly. Mm. Yeah, but we 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 have a touch in them. We have a touch in them. Sometimes when the company is very bullish, uh, very bullish, uh, because they know they are doing well. But if the share price has run way ahead of the fundamental, you also can get into problem, you know. So, ending story is that your hard work, your experience. Your wisdom, you know, your analysis is important. That is uh, your 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 success. Wisdom means, like for example, crisis is an opportunity. I can tell you this: when the market is at the lowest, they will tell you that, hey, "Hello, you know, the worst is going to come." Now, just go back to February and March. You know how many legend fund manager was so pessimistic? Some of them will say. This is the worst crisis in my lifetime. These are very known people. I don't know how to handle pandemic. You know. It's going to be very troublesome. You know. yeah. There are so many that that will confuse you. You know. Now maybe I just share with you another few minutes. Huh? It's good to compare last year with global financial crisis because U.S. is affected by global financial crisis. But we cannot compare last year versus Asian crisis, Asia financial crisis, because uh, Dow Jones and Asian crisis are not comparable because U.S. is not affected by Asian crisis so much. But still, we have one, one crisis to compare. Now, if you look at this way, yeah, uh, in global financial crisis, Dow Jones and many market, uh, many market, uh, in ASEAN, they hit the lowest point way before the economy pick up. They hit the lowest point even one quarter before the worst economy arrived. They already start running up. Then. Now, if you compare uh, last year, February, and all this thing, uh, it's almost quite similar. You know? The market hit the lowest point in March when your economic growth rate in June is even worse. Even worse. But they already hit the high lowest point earlier because they get so panicked, you know. Yeah. So that's something that you want to learn, you know. Yeah. So it's the share price. Is the quality of manager is how you analyze that gives you a lot of profit. So, but you may not want to buy all in one shot, but you 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 want to register. That gives you a super normal profit, especially the good company. Yeah. So just to share with you that you know, uh, you must understand that in a crisis time, the share drops so sharply that they are way ahead of the worst economy. Even the next quarter, the economy get worse. Your lowest point already way ahead. Yeah, yeah. That's something. But it happened exactly the same in last year versus global financial crisis. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's, that, that's what I call in-house study. So we take that risk, you know. We take that risk. We have done many crises before. So I was actually very actively, you know, uh, promoting people to go into equity and take longer term. So our, our we were quite successful uh, raising fund last year. Yeah, and people who buy our fund in March, April, May, June, they make good money, very good money. At the lowest point. Dana Mamo and now easily up more than fifty percent easily. So you 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 analyze also you must analyze intelligently. You know? mm -hmm. Okay, um, 
we still got a number of questions, but I think we will take. Hey, you know, we are overshooting one hour. No? We yeah, we overshooting. Yeah, yeah. But okay. it's okay. So, you know, uh, and, and <laughs> since we are doing it already, might as well do up to your maximum of service okay. section. <laughs> Let's go for last three questions. Is yeah, it okay? last three questions. I'm yeah. also getting tired already. You know, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I know. Thank you for I staying hope, with I hope, us. I hope so far so good. Yeah, you're happy. But if you have any urgent, uh, something that want to clear your mind, please quickly ask. We can. We yeah. can. We, 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 we have more than three questions. We have more than three outstanding questions. But I'll just pick the last three. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. The next one. Tianning is asking, right, you know about this idea about growth versus value. Um, uh, this has been in the debate where a lot of people keep bashing like value investing is underperforming the growth stocks for the last 10 years, at least in the US, right? So he's asking, do you see uh, value ever coming back to beat the growth stocks? Oh, this is a very good question. In fact, in fact, we send this, uh, we send this short notes to all of our clients, you know, uh, value investing versus growth investing. Okay, let me... Okay, if you look at our calendar, we actually mentioned a few things, you know, uh, in the past also. We say, no investment guideline will work all the time. That's very important, huh? Yeah. Now, value investing also don't work all the time. So is growth investment don't work all the time. Okay? Doesn't work all the time. But it works if you know how to make use of it. Uh, give you an example, like what you mentioned. Huh? Value investing seems not working because there's a lot of low PE stock and all these things. But you realize that, huh? you realize that in November and December, just two months ago, many of the value stocks start running very fast, you know, performing very well, you know. So then sometimes it's very psychological. When people start saying that value investing is irrelevant, it's not totally true. It doesn't work all the time, but it will work. It's a matter of time. Growth investing also doesn't work all the time. Give you an example, when tax bubble came in 2000, what happened? All the tax stock go down for two years, three years in a row. Yeah, so so also don't it doesn't work all the time, but it can work some of the time. So what is the ending story? Your analysis is important. No one investment right now work all the time. Okay, is that a good answer? Yes, very good answer. <laughs> okay. Short and yeah. Uh, next question from Elmer again. Uh, he said that. Uh, what what is a typical accuracy rate that your team pick? Like every out of ten stocks, uh, how many are eventually uh, no wrong decisions or mistakes? I, I guess he's asking because okay. as, uh, as uh, answer, your question, uh, answer your question. Uh, as a fund manager, you make mistake. You don't say if you go and tell people you don't make mistake. It's a joke, lah. No. Uh, that's why when I wrote my book, I mentioned that, you know, we make some mistake. We buy a share which they, you know, they are not so nice, uh, you know, telling all, all kinds of story, suspended, go to zero. <laughs> we make mistake. But the key, the key, yeah, don't make big mistake. Because if you very heavyweight and you make that mistake, or well, it going to hurt you, you know. Uh, don't make big mistakes. So sometimes that's why when we buy share, we buy one percent, one and a half percent, goes up further. We we increase it. You know, we seldom shop one shot. You know, we make five percent. You know, we seldom do that. We seldom do that. We because we need to study a bit more. Now when the crash comes, it's slightly different. Those those company has been around for a long long time, so we may do a bit more. But our strategy, yeah, we don't go and invest in any company up to 5% of my portfolio. A lot of time, 2 3% enough already. So the guy go 3 5 times, oh, oh, it become 10, 10 15%. You know? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. Shall we have 
one last question from the crowd. Uh, later, I still got more questions. <laughs> what are your views on the European market in the next five to 10 years? Because we have been talking about ASEAN, Asia, and US, right? What about Europe? Is there any future? Let me share with you. Uh, uh, last year, I have a lot of problems because last year, we make good money, double digit for ASEAN market, but we underperform the index, but also underperform Europe and US. And I remember I was not too happy, you know, you know, their negative interest rate, you make 16% for them, they're not happy because the index too, maybe 19, 18, you know. Uh, the long story short is that European market is not cheap. They also follow US. They are very expensive. Okay, lah. Let's not go into that. They are not cheap, they are expensive, and they don't have the earning growth that can justify in many of the companies. So I'm a bit concerned. Mm -hmm. But because they have a lot of money, so they continue. You see, when you go there and tell them that, look, my market drops so much, you know, and Asia will grow more than you, more than US, more than Europe. You should come and invest here. But sometimes they don't come because because precisely everybody do that, so your your ASEAN market sometimes also not performing well unless your stock pick is good. So if you are a friend manager, they believe that you have a capability to pick stock, maybe you have a chance. Huh? Other than that, actually, Europe is is almost you know the same as US. You know, you your your market your PE is not low, your market is not cheap. <clears throat> But your earning growth huh, is, you, you need to monitor their earning growth. The problem always come is when your PE is so high and get higher, but the earning growth is not there. That, that's a sign of uh, having problem, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, so but you... No, I'm not saying that all Europe, I mean, I don't cover Europe, you know, I just study a bit here and there. Uh, but if you can find a company that meet like uh, our criteria, you know, low gearing, growing, new management coming in, new product coming in, then you should go and buy them. You know? yeah. hmm. Case by case basis. Yes, yes. Okay. And almost, almost, almost like that. You know, you you. Although, like like for example, you say, oh, Indonesia is cheap, but you pick the wrong stock, you got problem. You know. Uh, you, then you say, oh, okay, uh, okay, like you say Thailand is a bit more expensive. You can say that, but then you pick the right stock, you're still doing very well. You know? Yeah. Okay. So, so, so um, to be... yeah, I, I, I think we use up the remaining three questions. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, for... one, one more question. Just be nice. Right. Yeah, no, just no, no. one more question actually is from me. Okay. The question is okay. that if let's say somebody, you know, is interested to uh you know want to subscribe to your fund or invest in your fund how can they go about doing it okay if you you notice you, you we put our website there you know uh in fact all our retail fund we have five retail fund we have two balance one two islamic fund one fixed income fund these are retail only one thousand ringgit you can buy but but unfortunately yeah all the fund we have also three offshore fund there are two two Offshore fund, one is small cap ASEAN, one is all cap, then one is Asia X Japan, called Victoria Fund. Yeah, uh, these are three offshore fund. Offshore fund, you need about 100,000 US. The other one, you, you don't need, you know. Retail fund, only 1,000 million. But okay, very importantly, we have registered this in the restricted scheme with MAS. But you must be an accredited investor if you want to buy our fund so that we, we don't breach. You know? uh, we, we register in the restricted scheme, only can sell to people who are accredited investors. Mm. Yeah, just because of restrictions. Uh. But in Malaysia, the five retail fund, 1,000 ringgit, you can buy already. Okay, so those who are based in Singapore, you have to be an AI accredited investor. And if you're interested, you can um, uh, approach. Just write, just write to our, 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 our this your contact website, page. You know? In yeah. fact, one of our staff is also listening to this today's talk. You know? 
Okay. But you just write to our website, you know, we, we, we can... We will probably it. drop a link in the comment box, so you can just click yes, the link. Yes, the, uh, yes. Throw the okay. Am I right? Uh? Hey, hello, Raymond, are you there, Raymond? <laughs> Raymond? <laughs> Raymond hello? can just... Yeah, 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 yeah. Raymond, are you... You went to sleep already. <laughs> no, 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 no. He's not around, I think. <laughs> just now, this, the, at the beginning, he's around. Yeah, he's around, so I, see, I still see his name okay. here. Yeah. So, okay. uh, so you write to us. We can we can answer any questions. You know, uh, on the retail fund, we have two balance fund, which uh, has done well. Yeah, we have two Islamic fund. Uh, we have one fixed income. Uh, then our offshore, we have two ASEAN, one small cap, one big cap. Then Victoria fund is Asia and Japan. Mm. Okay, okay. Yeah. thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, okay. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully uh, you benefit out of it. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, so far, how many people attend today? We have 100 over, 100 over, 150. Oh, yeah, about there. Okay. So thank you all for your questions. Sorry, we don't have time to answer every okay. single... Okay, we can do one more question. Yeah, we... Okay, <laughs> two more questions. That's really nice. I, anyway, I'm here already. Yeah. Okay, so last question, huh? Okay, ready? Last question. All right. Uh, okay, I'll pick this. Colin's question: What is your cut loss strategy you apply to your fund, especially when your investment thesis fails? So when do you know where to pull the plug? Okay, I think this is a very good question. Also, now I think I normally try not to fix a cut loss. You know, sometimes you know because. At times they go down and then they come back again. You know they go down because somebody need to sell shares. You know to pay their redemption. So my my answer to this question always is like that. You analyze the company. If you think the company got no hope, then you get out. You know you get out. You know. Ending story is the analysis. You know. Yeah. That that's my answer la, The the simple straightforward answer. Cut loss sometimes you got problem, you know. They, they are forced to sell, you go down, then then they certainly drop how many percent, and then you say you must get out because it becomes so undervalued. You, you should be buying instead of selling. So sometimes cut loss I find not the best idea. The I best idea is to analyze them, but if you're not happy then you get out. So it's also your decision, you know, it's also your decision. Uh but also, it depends on whether you can afford to take the risk, you know. Yeah, your yeah. own financial position is important. Yeah. Okay, I hope I have answered your question nicely. Yes. Not yeah, an we've... easy, not an easy thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I think we have, uh, personally, I've, I've, I've learned a lot of wisdom from you as well, just from uh, hearing you answering their questions. And I think they also have asked quite good questions along the way uh yeah maybe maybe you know we can may have another session in the future to, to answer more questions that we didn't manage to finish today uh thank you very much for your time thank you dr tan thank you everyone okay thank you bye all right yes, bye. bye have a nice week ahead